What a blessing. children this song is so awesome wow i heard this song over the weekend and i was like wow god he is with you in the evening in your coming and you're going yes god hallelujah i love this he is for you Hallelujah. He is for you. I love that. I love when she says, may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children. And then she even goes on to say, you know, may his favor be upon you in your coming, in your going, when you're weeping, when you're rejoicing. He is with you. He is for you. He's in front of you. He's behind you. He's beside you, all around you. Wow. Oh my goodness. It's like, can we really fathom the love of our Father? He's nigh. He is with us. He is not some far off deity in a box somewhere that we have to, you know, feel that we, we, he, he can't reach us. He's with us. He's right here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Bonjour. <laughs> It is a fantastic day. I am so thankful to be here with you on this Thursday morning. I'm Tawana. Welcome. You are light and love. We are coming up on chapter three, the end of chapter three in The Millionaire from Nazareth. By the way, that song is written um, by Elevation Worship. It's called The Blessing. And this book is written by Catherine Ponder. Good morning. Good morning, Sina. How are you? God bless you guys. It is a fantastic day. We're moving right along. Today, we are talking about um, experiencing and venturing in prosperous living. Yes, yes, yes. I know. I know. I, I listened to the news 
I look at social media, I'm hearing it in the radio. I know what they are saying. I know what they're saying. But let me encourage you today that you don't have to be the same. I know people are dying. People are ill. The word of God says a thousand may fall by my side and 10,000 by my right hand, but it shall not come near my dwelling. It shall not. Only with thine eye shall I look and see. We see it. We, we kind of halfway understand it. But I just want you to know that you today, you can have good health, prosperity, inner peace, joy, and love. You are light and love. You are light and love. We are thankful today. Chapter three. This is a summary. He experienced a new venture in prosperous living and you can too. Before launching forth into chapters four and five, on a specific study of the prosperous thinking contained in the Beatitudes and the Lord's Prayer, you will find assurance in this letter written by a businessman from the state of Washington. Prosperous thinking really works if you persist in using it. Got to exercise, got to do the work. Prosperous thinking really works if you persist in using it. Since I took up this study, I have bought a business and building a house and the building of a house to it. This is quite a prosperity demonstration for me. I started out working for the man who now works for me. <laughs> I will be 62 this year and had thought by this age, I would be rocking away placidly. But I am able and God is willing. So here we go into a new venture in prosperous living. How many can relate to that? I know I talked to um, a couple of my girlfriends in in 2017, I used to say, oh my gosh, like I thought I would be doing this and that and da 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 well, my vibration was off. <laughs> I had to recalibrate my thinking, which is what she's encouraging you to do today. Also, it doesn't matter about our age or where we thought we would be. What matters is the steps that we are taking today to go where we desire to be tomorrow. She says, I trust that as you take the study of prosperous truths found in each of the Beatitudes and in the Lord's Prayer, you will also find yourself launching forth into new ventures in prosperous living. As you turn to chapter four and begin, here we go. The summary. Some of Jesus's most famous teachings the Beatitudes and the Lord's Prayer contain powerful prosperity formulas. The reason that Jesus gave these at a time before he performed many of his miracles of prosperity and healing was this. When the inner nature of man is fed, outer results then come far more easily. Let me read that again. When the inner man is fed, when the inner nature of man is fed, outer results then come far more easily. Remember, she was talking about doing the work inwardly and filling those wine um, bottles, <laughs> clay pots to the brim, doing the work on the inside first. It has been estimated that success may be the result of as much as 98% inner preparation and only 2% outer action. In both the Beatitudes and the Lord's Prayer, 
One is first prepared inwardly for outer success. The reason some of Jesus's most powerful success teachings, including the Beatitudes and the Lord's Prayer, are found in the prosperous gospel of Matthew is because the successful, Ma- the successful Matthew learned from Jesus the inner truth about prosperity and how to manifest his supply from within outwardly. So if we check out Matthew's gospel, the successful Matthew learned from Jesus the inner truth about prosperity and how to manifest his supply from within outwardly, not looking at what we have in our hands, but changing our mindset to believe and to speak that which we desire and need. And it's going to be manifested for us. We will always have what we need when we need it. There's no lack. There is an abundance. As chief tax collector, Matthew was ready in his soul growth to expand from outer competitive hard work consciousness of supply to an inner creative level of abundance, which he did as a disciple of Jesus. So he was ready to to change from this physical I got to go work hard every day. I'm grinding, I'm grinding, I'm grinding. Doesn't mean we don't go and do the work. But changing that material thought, the physical thought to doing the inner work, doing the work on the inside, he says is 98% inner work. Our thoughts, our attitude, how we prepare, how we process things in our minds. Are we resting? Are we eating properly? Are we exercising? Are we doing the inner work to exercise this inner body and then allowing those things that we have thought and prepared for to begin to manifest on the outside? Matthew realized that by learning from Jesus how to develop an inner consciousness of supply, his prosperity would come as the need arose, but he would not be encumbered with the outer burdens so often associated with a strictly material wealth. He realized that by learning from Jesus how to develop an inner consciousness of supply, our father has all things, everything that we need. And he's such a good, good father that he will not withhold a good thing from his children. Jesus was not an illiterate carpenter, but an educated man often called rabbi, which meant doctor or professor. Not only did he have great knowledge of the Hebrew law, but he was also considered by some to be a master and a great initiate of the teachings of the East. In any event, he gave a practical prosperous interpretation of the teachings of his time. One, not to commonly, um, the teachings that he gave, it says one, not commonly given by other rabbis. So they called him rabbi, which meant doctor or professor. And not only did he have great knowledge of the Hebrew law, he was also considered by some to be a master and great initiate of the teachings of the East. In any event, he gave a practical, prosperous interpretation of the teachings of his time, one not commonly given by other rabbis. Remember, she told us that there were great secrets and metaphysical understandings of um, consciousness that were not given to the masses because they wanted to keep the masses Um, low and low on the totem pole and and impoverished and under the rule um, of those leaders of that day. But there were small groups of, of people that were giving these secrets to prosperous living, to obtaining wealth. And they were teaching them in small groups or they were passing it on by word of mouth and they weren't writing it down. And here she's saying Jesus was giving these practical, prosperous interpretations 
to everybody, to the masses, anybody, the whosoever, the whosoever would come. And that wasn't common by other rabbis. Whether Jesus ever studied outside of Israel will always be debatable. So it's debatable. As the son of God, he had been sufficiently endowed with the inner powers of mind and spirit to know and to achieve all that he did and to show his followers how to do likewise. Remember when he said, these things that I do and greater are what you're going to be able to do too. Mystical minds have always searched out the success and prosperity symbology of the Bible which was often given in allegory and symbols. The great people of the Bible were master psychologists and metaphysicians who strove constantly to teach the power of mental attitudes for success or failure. So it can work both ways. You are what you think, not so much what you eat, but you might become what you eat if you keep eating it long enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, I just crack myself up sometimes. <laughs> the great people of the Bible were master psychologists and metaphysicians who strove constantly to teach the power of mental attitudes for success or failure. No wonder a strong excitement ran through the masses when Jesus appeared. He began to prosper and heal and gave his followers hope for a better way of life. For political reasons, life had become harsh and difficult for the Jews. Beautiful Galilee was a proper setting for Jesus's early prosperity teachings, beginning with the Beatitudes. Located far from the conservative Jerusalem, the free-thinking Galileans accepted his revolutionary success teachings gladly, starting with the beautiful attitudes from the Sermon of the Mount or the bountiful attitudes. And so this is the, um, that's the final part of the summary in chapter three. Next week, we'll start on chapter four, prosperity from the Beatitudes. But the couple things that stuck out to me this morning as we were going through the summary is understanding that we have to do the work on the inside first. It's an inside job. And then knowing that our, the, who Jesus Christ was, was not just God or not just man, but both, both all human and all spiritual because God had endowed him with the Holy Spirit. He was the son of God. It said, not only did he have great knowledge of the Hebrew law, but he was also considered by some to be a master and great initiate of the teachings of the East. In any event, he gave a practical, prosperous interpretation of the teachings of his time. And that was not common by given, commonly given by other rabbis. It said also as the son of God, he had been sufficiently endowed with the inner powers of mind and spirit to know and to achieve all that he did and to show his followers how to do likewise. So if we are following the teachings of Christ and I'm not, please, I'm not trying to be funny or, you know, get all into religiosity. I'm just simply saying, if you read the word, read the Bible and begin to practice and to glean these principles, you're changing your thought processes. You're turning off those um, negative things from the past, those negative mindsets about money, success, poverty, education, whatever. You're, you're turning those things off. You are allowing yourself to be healed from whatever trauma you experienced and trauma is different for everybody. You're allowing yourself to be healed. You're doing the inner work. And then you're, you know, that inner work is allowing you to fill your vase to the brim. You know, that first miracle at Canaan where God turned, Jesus turned water into wine. And he said, you will have what you need when you need it, just keep filling, filling your vase, filling your cup, filling those big stony, hard clay pots to the brim, fill it up. 
No wonder a strong excitement ran through the masses when Jesus appeared. He began to prosper and heal, and he gave his followers hope for a better way of life, which is what we're doing today. Why we come together today, why we decided to read The Millionaire from Nazareth is because during all this that's going on around us, we need to remember that there is hope. Thank you, Valerie. God bless you. I love you guys. There is hope. So show up today in whatever it is that you have to do, be present. Because when you show up, the whole atmosphere shifts. You are light and love. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you next week. And we're going to dive into chapter four of the Millionaire of Nazareth. Remember to share um, these messages. And I am so excited. Thank you, Safi, for joining us this morning. You guys, like, look, we have been sharing our messages. Um, Brenda, Valerie, Thomasina, thank you guys for being here this morning. We've been sharing these messages um, on our timeline. And now we have people from the Philippines, people from Australia, different people reading the good news. Wow. That is super exciting. Keep sharing the messages. I really appreciate it. God bless you. I will see you on next week. Mwah.